everyone welcome back hope you guys are doing well in this lecture we're going to be discussing about computational geometry there are uh, various applications for these algorithms essentially the algorithms which deal with uh, with solving the geometric problems okay those algorithms comes under uh, the area of uh, computational geometry various applications such as robotics forestry, statistics, metallurgy, VLSI design, uh, textile layout, manufacturing, computer graphics, molecular modeling, computer aided design, um, various application areas for, for these algorithms. So what essentially typically these algorithms take inputs in some form of a geometric object such as a line segment, set of points, or polygon orientation, okay, where different corners of a polygon lies, that location on a plane. Okay. Uh, you can uh, say it's a set of points, P1, P2. Typically, we represent uh, when we are you know, discussing such kind of algorithms uh, to make our life simpler, uh, where each PI is a point on a plane okay. and these may be you know two-dimensional um, objects or we may extend the similar concepts to three-dimensional planes nevertheless the focus of this lecture is to introduce you about these kind of algorithms all right and what is the output output typically we are interested in some kind of a question or query about uh, about these objects for example, whether the line segments, they do intersect with each other or if uh, you have been given a set of points, whether there is a convex hell kind of object exists or some other kind of uh, questions uh, related to that. So essentially the output would be, would be some sort of answer, okay, what, uh, for which query you are looking for. As you can see here in this, uh, in this diagram, we have two points, P1 and P2, okay? And this is a origin, we may call it a point, P0. Now, there may be certain questions that whether P1 is in clockwise direction than P2 or anti-clockwise direction, how we can know with respect to a common point, uh, here it's origin or we may call it P0, all right? Or another interesting thing here is that uh, if we go from P0 to P1 and then P1 to P2, then do we make a left turn at point P1 or right turn? So if we go from, from origin to P1 and then P1 to P2. Is it a left or right turn? So how the computer can solve such kind of uh, uh, problems or give you the answer? And this is a very simple, typical example to make you understand that uh, what are the nature of uh, these problems we deal under computational geometry, All right? So an important concept uh, we're gonna be talking about a cross product. Let's say we have two, uh, two points, P1 and P2. And if we give a direction to these points with respect to origin P or P0, then cross product gives us a very, uh, very vital information which our algorithm can make use of. Okay. So if we draw another point, which is uh, P1 plus P2, or in simple words, if P1 is, uh, let's say, X1 and Y1 and P2 is some point X2 and Y2, okay? So simply P1 would be, P1 plus P2 would be the addition of X1 plus X2 and Y1 plus Y2. X1 
plus x2 that would be the value in the x direction and y1 plus y2 that point we are talking about here okay so if we if we draw that point then whatever is the area under this uh, polygon see here this area that would be the cross product of p1 and p2 and that cross product we can also represent via determinant of a matrix or simply x1 y2 minus x2 y1 now depending upon the nature of this uh, this product whether it is positive negative or zero we can deduce some facts about these two points for example if this cross product is greater than zero then we can say that p1 is clockwise from p2 so if it is positive then we can say this is clockwise direction okay clockwise and if it is negative then we can simply say it is in anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise direction another interesting case arises when uh, the cross product is not positive but not negative but the zero so what it means that when the cross product is zero that essentially the the line segments they are collinear okay so they may be in in this topology where they do not intersect or they may be in this topology where only one end intersect and lies on the line segment which connects to two other points okay. so it's a boundary case it's a tricky tricky situation now let's uh, try to uh, see uh, what if that uh, these two line segments we want to know whether these two intersect or they don't intersect so cross product can can help us or our algorithm can make use of cross product to answer that question how let's uh, see the algorithm how we the line segment uh, intersect algorithm works so as you can see here that in this algorithm line number 1 to 2 they simply calculate the direction relative direction of uh, the line segments which connects uh, let's say let's take out d2 so line segment which connects p3 and p4 okay with respect to the point p2 what is the direction or nothing but the cross product okay so and line number three is is just simply checking whether if the cross product is non-zero then it's a very simple uh, answer that we just check few conditions and determine whether these two line segments which connect these four points intersect or not but what if uh, one cross product is zero then we are at a boundary case then we have to see whether we are our line segments are in this topology or in this topology okay in both topologies cross product is zero so if the line segments are in the topology number one then they do not inter intersect with each other but if the line segments are in topology two then one end point lies on the same uh, the same line or collinear with the line which connects to two other points so these two simple simple things we got to check for each combination okay each combination of the uh, the of these points or line segments and rest of the algorithm is very simple as you your expert now in algorithms and you can simply see these if else conditions I don't have to explain the direction is uh, subroutine is simply giving you the cross product 
cross product pk minus pi if pi pj pk these three points we want to check the direction of the k then pk minus P, pi cross product pj minus pi with respect to common point pi okay or in other words you can think of this is origin 0 0 in the in the previous uh, example we discussed and pj and pk 0 0 pj is another point this is pj and pk another point and this is our origin pi okay so we calculate the cross products and on segment is simply determining whether a a point pk this is point pk it lies on a line segment which connects to pi and pj okay and if if the one of the point uh, end point of a segment lies on on the line segment which connects pi and pj we say that okay they do intersect on we are in topology number two so very simple uh, very simple class of algorithms all right uh, now we discussed about um, the use of cross product uh, we did discuss one thing that um, if we're gonna if we're gonna go from um, p0 to p1 and then p1 to p2 if we want to follow that path then we're gonna make be making a left turn or right turn on p1 how do we know that well cross product help us there that uh, if the if the cross product here is greater than zero then and we are moving from p0 to p1 and p1 to p2 then we are making here is the left turn okay so we are making here a left turn if our cross product is positive if our cross product is negative, okay, it means that uh, the P1 is in counterclockwise direction here, okay, then P2, and we are going from P0 to P1 and P1 to P2, and we're going to be making a right turn, okay, we're going to be making right turn. So as you can see here that uh, we discussed very simple concepts regarding uh, regarding line segments and uh, how can we make use of uh, cross products in a very simple way. Now uh, other algorithms, more complex algorithms, uh, they, they are basically uh, similar in nature which make use of some sort of uh, or in some way uh, the cross product so it's important it's important concept to learn all right guys thank you very much for watching uh, the professor lectures hope you are enjoying and uh, our efforts are contributing to your learning if you have any questions comments suggestions for uh, future lectures please do not hesitate to to send us a message we appreciate uh, your feedback and support. Uh, 